In this video, I'm going to break down Jalen Green's 42 points versus the Wizards. Tap in right now. Enjoy. The Rockets Chop Shop is your one-stop shop for all your basketball needs, for highlights, analysis, podcasts. We do it all here at the Rockets Chop Shop. Make sure you hit the like button on the videos that you watch if you enjoy them. Hit the subscribe button to get notifications from all the great drops that we have on the channel. Also, you can visit the Chop Shop merch store and get you some of the swaggiest gear in the Houston Rockets kingdom. And if you want, you know, you can always support the channel directly through donations. And if you want, you can support us through our partnerships with our sponsors. The Rockets Chop Shop is made by fans for fans. And we're going to keep rocking and keep dropping that heat. QD, sir, from me. This is something I know. All right, the first play is absolutely beautiful, beautiful. This encapsulates where Coach Adoka has taken this team from the first game where we saw them struggling against the uh, Orlando Magic. I think that was our first game, but I just want you guys to peep this, bro. Peep these actions and peep how it engages the defenders. Now, I'm gonna preface this by saying the Wizards are a terrible defense, but nonetheless, even running this against the air for our team is a huge, huge upgrade from where we were offensively and i think coach adoka does deserve some credit the first thing you're going to see here is um there at the bottom jalen and uh jabari are going to run a little action where jalen rubs uh jabari's man off to get him free uh to fred right all of this is a dummy action look at the washington defender so they're focused on the dummy action which is going to be what the rockets like to run a, a lot which is uh pick and roll um, with Jabari, Shango, whoever it is, and you're going to get for Jabari, it's probably a pop. He's going to pop out for a three. Jabari comes up to set the screen and instantly ghosts the screen, right? Ghosting it is like a slip, but he ghosts it into a pop. So what that does for uh, number 13, I don't even know the numbers of some of these guys on. I think that's Jordan Poole. I'm not sure. Um, but that keeps him in no man's land. He's in la la land right here. Right now, Jabari's probably open for the shot. That's an option, but that's really not what the play is about. Let's go back to where Jalen and the men are. You can see here's a real action. Once he sees Fred heading toward the corner, he's at a man is gonna cut, and that cut turns into a down screen or a pin down for Jalen Green. And the man does a great job taking up two, creates a shooting pocket for Jalen into a nice, that's called the pocket right there, that little circle, gets him a nice, great way to start the game. Great play design, getting Jalen initiated early, getting him involved early, um, just a, a great way to start the game and get your, your guy going. One of the things that Emil Doka, I've seen from him in, in on the Celtics is that his offense is really made on capitalizing off of mismatches. The issue with the Rockets, uh, for a lot of our players, they have not been good enough to capitalize on taking advantage of mismatches. Uh, Jalen Green earlier in the year, a, guy, a, a setup like this, he likely would have just attempted to just try to turn the corner on this and run into the teeth of the defense, but you can see the patience develop here. Gets the ball out gets to really slow the pace down. And I like this because if he was playing a big and a drop, that should be a shot, right? Because the guy's sitting in the paint, but you get a guy that looks unathletic um, is gonna come up and guard you. So what you need to do is let your spacers get to where they're gonna get and go ahead and cook. So this is a guy that's terrified of Jalen's uh, attack. You can see he's overselling to the back pedal, all off balance. Jalen used that to his advantage, gives him a nice step into a step back, pull up three. That's a great shot, great shot. Make or miss league, right? You could miss those shots, make those shots. It's not really about the, you know, whether he's efficient. It's about the process of getting, um, you know, getting your shots off, type of shot selections and everything else. Transition, um, you know, getting to your offense fast is a the thing they're doing now. The Rockets have been top 10 in pace since the All-Star break. And it really helps, um, you know, helps our guys out because they don't have to face the set defense. It makes it a lot easier to be able to attack. Once again, Corey Kispert was cooked in this game, attacked. He's on a back pedal, all out of positions, you know, doesn't really know what he wants to do. So Jalen's just toying with him at this point, able to get to the rim for uh, and, and one. Once again, hunting mismatches, Coach Adoka's calling card. Corey Kispert is gonna be the guy they're gonna hunt here for the next couple of plays. One-on-one -on -one with Jalen, team just clears out. Everybody just space and the guys knew the assignment. The team knew the assignment. Shout out to Fred, Dylan, Jabari, and the man just knowing the assignment 
of knowing and being disciplined enough to let your mismatches happen. Once again, using their momentum against them, pull up threes. The only difference between this game and a game from like two months ago is as far as offensively as the shots are going in and he's taking advantage of the type of plays he's supposed to make. Whether it's a slower footed guy guarding you, you attack them downhill. Whether it's a guy that's gonna play you off, you shoot. And it's just simple like that. Basketball is a real easy game. Here you're gonna get uh, Fred, uh, about to, he's gonna fake like he's, they're gonna do a little guard on guard action here. But Fred just ghosts that. Once again, you get two on one with Jalen um, and they're indecisive. Now, I don't know if the Wizards were supposed to trap this, but they didn't, terrible defense by them. Um, but you get a slower guy in front of you, able to hit the corner. The help comes um, and you pivot out and get into your mid-range shot, which he's been hitting at a high clip. Good bucket. Once again, get the screen. They had Kispert um, really just hunting him once again. He was, he was being hunted terribly. Get the isolation on Kispert. Don't even let him get set. Use the speed, get to the, get to the, uh, to the cup, easy. Easy bucket. Now you got a man as a screener, which is a look I really, really enjoy. A uh, man is you, just so versatile. He's like a unicorn uh, of a basketball player, just a unique player. You can use him everywhere on defense and on offense. Here is setting a screen for Jalen. Ghost the screen and he's able to roll to the basket and get a nice contested layup off and one. Um, a man as a screener is something I'm going to keep an eye on going forward. And we'll see what that, that because he doesn't have enough data on those plays to really make anything of it, but we got to keep an eye on that. When I say basketball is easy, once again, it's not really about the shots made or anything like that. It's really about the process of it because that stuff scales up. On this play here, you're going to see, you're going to get a high, you know, high screen with Jock Landell at the three-point line. You get a big and a drop. If you guys watch my videos, what should Jalen do if he sees a big and a drop? I'll give you a couple of seconds. It's like uh, one of those PBS shows. Yes, that's right. If you guess that he should shoot, shoot, shoot it, um, if a big is given that much space, then you are exactly correct. And that's exactly what he does. Um, this is a very shallow drop coverage. So it's it's right at almost damn near at the screen. Does a great job using that jab step to get the big off of him and just creates a lot of space. Look at that space. And that's, that's buckets. So you get here um, a screen, Jack Landell again. Holmes is still in a drop. Um, and this is um, after he's been shut out for a while, right? He had that hot uh, first quarter. And he went through a stretch of only scoring about three points. They were trapping him in a half court. And uh, then they kind of got undisciplined. Now they're playing him back in a drop again. And this time he's able to kind of bait them into a fake drive and then pull back into a three. Now, I don't like this shot, but when he's hot, like you can take a couple of these. You can take a couple of these. Um, if he's going to hit that at a higher clip, I expect that, but I don't like that shot. But when you're hot, you can take a couple of those. Another screen here. They're going to start trapping again, but he rejects the screen. He doesn't want the trap. He wants to go score, right? So this is a terrible trap, right? But he rejects it. Nice, you know, one-two dribble outside, attacks the outside foot of the defender. Look at all that green grass in front of him, right? Just like a running back that's broken through the line of scrimmage. You get downhill. You get ready to put bro on the poster, but check this out. That is sick, sickness. I don't know which one's more impressive, this layup or the one he did where he went uh, scoop under, up and under, but this is one of the more impressive Jalen Green finishes. Damn near one of the best finishes of this year um, in the NBA. Look at Dylan Brooks, my God. It's one of those nights. Quick action, I want you guys to notice a lot of these screens a lot of these actions are coming off of made buckets. Um, this is the pace they've been playing with since the All-Star break. It doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't really allow the, the the defense of the opponents to get set, right? They can't get set. And a lot of times if they try to execute a game plan like trapping, it causes chaos. That's why it's always good to play with pace, um, which is what people confuse with transition. Transition is good. You get that off of defensive stops, but pace is what you want to play with, especially with a young team, because um, it gets your guys into at advantageous positions. Now, a lot of people blame Coach Udoka for how slow we were and them being methodical. My theory is that he wanted to teach them the right things, know their plays, and then from there on, you can learn to go faster. You don't want to do the wrong thing really fast. So once again, they're going to trap him, a terrible trap, and just leave uh, Jack Landale on a island just floating out there by himself. Um, Jalen could have probably attacked Champagne's outside um, uh, arm right there and just got to the basket if he wanted. But look at this pass, putting a little flare on it. The spin, I love that. I love when I see players do a little razzle-dazzle. 
just not in the clutch moments like Shangun and Harden used, uh, usually do. Um, but great pass right there for an assist. Here's a transition play. They get out a run. This is really, really good stuff right here. Able to share the rock with a man Thompson, who's a demon. Got to do a different video for a man uh, fairly soon. One of these breakdowns. Once again, talk about tempo and pace. They're getting the screen damn near at half court. You know why you do this? Because you give your guy more runway to be able to attack that trap, right? When they're trapping you, if you let them trap you at the three-point line, it really makes the G defense's job easier. If you can get Jalen Green downhill um, at half court, and we've seen this with James Harden a lot, um, you can get him attacking um, that big that's unathletic and shouldn't be on the court trying to guard him. A lot of times you're going to get him fake outside, cross back inside, and attack that inside foot and try to get middle on him. Uh, let's see if he does. The guy goes way inside, so he goes outside. You get uh, uh, Jeff there getting another screen for him, and now he gets an isolation with Jordan Poole, who I wouldn't trust to um, guard my bike if I parked it uh, unchained at Walmart. So uh, non-contested three, hand down, man down, as they say. Once again, tempo. Get into your almost a drag screen off of a made bucket with uh, Londale. Right there, Jalen Green. This is not a big and a drop, but it's hands down, man's down, get into your bag. Once you're feeling like this to turn around, my God, my God. And this was the icing on the cake to get us um, the 42nd point. Just feeling it downhill and one, and one. What a stretch of games by Jalen Green. This 42 points capping off a a historic stretch for him. I think this is probably the best basketball he's played in his life. I'm going to say life because it's not just scoring. Um, it's on the defensive end as well. Um, the rebounding is is really, really good. I mean, a damn near elite for a guard right now. Um, you think about the last time he's been this efficient multiple games in a row. You're going back to his rookie year when he was having that uh, five game streak of scoring 30 or more points, uh, challenging an Island Iverson record, right? And these are the glimpses that you see um, when you think about, you know, why he, he was drafted and regarded so highly as a prospect uh, coming out of the G League, League Ignite and also out of high school um, and some of the prep schools that he went to. Um, but like, you know, like I said in the breakdown, a lot of the things that he's doing are things that have been there. Um, he's just making the right plays right now. And for the offensive wise, um, that's making the right reads, attacking a big and a drop. If you have a slow defender, attack them, knowing your mismatches, knowing when to give the ball up. I think he did a great job doing that, staying patient when they were trapping him and knowing when to pick his spots. Um, and if you can do that, the shots may or may not fall. And one thing I'm going to establish with Jalen, this is on brand for me since day one. I don't care about his, his number efficiency. I don't care about his efficiency. For me, when I watch Jalen Green, what I want to see is aggression. Are you attacking the rim? Are you playing defense? Are you focused? Are you locked in? Are you rebounding? Because the scoring is is just going to be there. Y'all know my philosophy. When you score in a vacuum without doing any of those other things, it's one of the most meaningless uh, things that you could do from a player that's going to be like a starter level, right? Those are the six men. But when you're scoring and you're defending and you're rebounding, that changes the game. Right. That's that's a game changer. Right. That's a game changer. My thing about um, about two guards, especially right. Two guards, one of the hardest position for guys to become superstars out of the way a two guard can be a superstar. You look at the archetypes of the past, the Kobe's, Jordan's, uh, D ways I count as a superstar. You have your modern types, the Devin Booker's and whatnot of the world is one of two ways. One, either you're going to be uh, an efficient scorer that's a playmaker, or two, you're going to be an efficient scorer that is a two-way player that can guard and clamp. They don't build a lot of two-way two guards anymore. Uh, so what I'm seeing from Jalen right now is something that's very, very unique. I'm going to go back to one of the things I said uh, when he first came into the Rockets, which is that um, the thing that makes him uh, theoretically, now I'm not saying because y'all don't dunk me when he has a bad game. Um, that's why I don't use his efficiency as a marker. Um, I'm going to just use stuff I see like from him doing aggression, etc. I'm not saying that he has to shoot this well. This is not. That's why I never equate his shooting with good games, right? He doesn't have to shoot this well to have a good game. Um, but when he can shoot like this and if he can do this over a consistent period, the, the, the scary part about what he can be, this is all theoretical. What he can be is that you have the ability to shoot off of screens and the athleticism to drive down, downhill. That's a combination of two skill sets that are usually not mixed up in the same player. 
Um, so the upside there is, is really, really crazy. Um, what I like about the Jalen Green that I'm seeing right now, uh, obviously the scoring, the amazing plays is all, all great. What I like about it is the intensity and the focus that he's showing. Um, and that, that moves me. If you're going to move me, that's what's going to do it because that mental aspect of basketball to me is more important than the physicals. Um, as you know, we've talked about all year, a lot of this stuff is in his head and he just needs to find out what it is that motivates him. And he said it after the game, his daughter, bro, or his kid, I don't know if he's having a girl. I'm just assuming it's a girl because I'm a girl dad. I got a son, but my, my daughter is like everything to me. So as a man, I understand when he said post game, uh, what he said to Vanessa. Since all-star break, you have been explosive. What is motivating you? Um, my family, my family, um, my baby. So yeah. You're the best, Jalen. Thank you. Thank you. I understand that because, you know, when you're growing up, and I said this about Kevin Porter Jr., um, as you mature as a man, there are certain things that happen in your life that help your brain kind of develop as well, right? A 21-year-old, 22-year-old, 23, you still think, you know, you're invincible, you can do all these things. Um, usually dudes don't really get smart. So ladies, if you're listening, you're, if you got a, a, dude, a boyfriend or a husband that's below 25, his brain is still developing. Uh, you don't get smart till 25. Then you realize like, oh man, life is really serious. Uh, so for him, having a kid has accelerated that process for him. Uh, this version of any of the players we have right now is not who they're going to be when they're 24, 25, 26 years old. Um, that's why you want to give them a lot of runway to be able to, to, to develop. Uh, my recipe for success for Jalen is still the same. I'm not going to change. Lock yourself up in a gym. This summer right here that he has coming up, this summer he has coming up is going to be the most important summer of his career because that this summer is going to decide whether he's going to be a star player or he's going to be a, a, a starter or a role player or is he going to be Houston is going to be playing somewhere else. All of that, like maybe the Houston Rockets don't trade him or anything like that. Obviously, you guys know my stance on that. Um, to me, you got to give him another year. Uh, but like this summer is really going to dictate it because this version of the guy we're seeing right here, and I'm not even going to give him this like he has to do this, drop 42. Just the guy that can hit his shots, the guy that can play defense, the guy that's rebounding. You copy and paste that player to um, October 20, whatever the first game of the season was. This team that we have right now is the sixth seed in the West. My motto, I've said this all year, we are a Jalen Green leap away. Is the leap here? I don't know. I hope so. I hope so. But there are some things that I'm seeing that to me, he can't go back to, right? The rebounding is there. It's been consistent damn near a month now. The defense has been consistent damn near 15, 15 games now. So he can do it and he can do it for stretches. To me, the last thing that's going to drop for him is, well, two things. Number one, the shooting efficiency. And to me, that's dictated by his shot selection. And when he makes the right plays like he's been doing, and it seems like something has clicked in his mind about making those right plays, the world is his, right? And then when you compound that with Alperin Shangoon, Amen Thompson, Jabari Smith, Atari Eason, when he comes back, Cam Whitmore, the team gets real interesting, real interesting about attacking teams and what you want to do. The way we're playing right now is, is not complete. This is a, um, you know, obviously the competition is what it is, but this is not something you can sustain for 82 games. Um, they're going to have to find a way to take the greatness of multiple players and mend them together. That's on email Doka to do. And that's how you build dynasties, right? I said the D word when on the last pod with Roosh saying that I think we're cooking a dynasty. The reason I'm saying that is I'm seeing things, bro. I'm seeing uh, you got a big. Now you got a guard that's waking up. Basketball is, is a game that's as old as time. The, the combination of the big man and the, and the perimeter player is as old as time. You can't do it alone. If you're a perimeter player, you need a big to dance with you. If you're a big man, you need a guy on the on the wings or the perimeter to dance with you. Can these kids dance with each other? That's what we got to see. That's what we got to see. That's what email Doka got to cook up. I think they were cooking up and then Shangun got hurt. Uh, Jack Londell is a poor man's version of what we could be doing because I want you guys to think about one thing as you're watching these highlights from Jalen Green. How can you trap Jalen at half court with Shangun in the short roll, leaving either because you're probably trapping with a, with a small. No, no, you're going to be trapping. Actually, you're going to be trapping with your big man. So you're going to leave Shangun attacking downhill, which is one of the most devastating things in the NBA, attacking your defense downhill on a, on a weak side helper, which is likely a small forward. You know what I call that? Hakuna Matata. 
those are the type of things you want to put teams on. That is what I call a bind. When you can put teams in a bind, what do they do? Do I trap Jalen? Do I let him cook my guy one-on-one? Do I let him pull up for three? No, I'm going to trap him. I can't let him pull up for three. Guess what now you're doing? You got a big man that's an elite passer and an elite downhill driver. Those are called problems. If they want to try to overplay that, I got shooters in the corner. I got a man cutting off the corner, which he looked great doing today. I got Jabari waiting to, to pull up on you. If we get a movement shooter that adds more, more pressure, you can start seeing how you can mix and match the different types of um, lineups that the Rockets could use and, and be able to like, like play with teams and just destroy them from multiple angles. Um, it, it is a beautiful thing to watch develop. Um, shout out to Coach Udoka. I mean, he is, to me, right now, I, I would give him clearly the coach of the year. I can't because of what Orlando is doing because they're they're really cooking it up right now. OKC deserves a shout out for that. Uh, they're uh, digging out over there as well. But I think Udoka has done such a marvelous job. I've doubted him. I still doubt his offense a little bit. I'm a little worried about the offense. But at the end of the day, man, to me, if you had said that the Rockets would come into this season, um, be a top 10 defense, finish out with 40 wins because I think we're going to get to 40. Um, then I would have said that was a successful season. So I think they're going to get to 40 wins. I'm pretty sure we're going to finish out as a top 10 defense. And I'm going to say that this season is trending towards successful. Now we got some games coming up. Chicago, uh, I I don't know. Somebody told me they've been good. I haven't watched Chicago in like months. I'm not going to lie. So really haven't watched film on them. Um, We got Utah, a couple games. Then it gets serious in April. I think April is going to be the stress that decides whether we make the play in or not. Uh, we have that Warriors game on April 4th. That's going to be a playoff game outright. That's a playoff game. That's a playoff game. Like, <laughs> I can't wait, bro. That's going to be a popcorn. Get your popcorn. Get your soda. That's going to be a movie. And how poetic would it be if we were the ones to knock off the Warriors from their playoff push and blow up that dynasty after all the pain they've caused us as Rockets fans? But, you know, exciting times for the Houston Rockets. I cannot wait to see how the season ends. I cannot wait for next season because I feel like, I personally feel like some of the stuff Jalen's doing, even if he shot bad, if he just took better shots with the defense, the rebounding and stuff like that, it's it's going to be a positive. Because you know how I know? After the All-Star break, he's been a positive. In fact, he's been the highest positive on the team even when his shot wasn't falling at the start of the uh, post-break. So that to me changes everything uh, for their starting five. Um, you still have Tari Eason coming back. I mean, there's so many exciting developments. Uh, I want to get all these guys healthy so we can make a real push. But while we're locked in right now, I do want us to make the plan because I'd love to see our guys get a chance in the plan because I think it would do wonders for their development. So you guys let me know, man. What do you think about Jalen? Do you think the leap has arrived? Are you still skeptical? Um, do you think that he can sustain this for next season? Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button. Keep rocking with the chop shop and we're going to keep dropping that. 